Let's get something clear here. This is the only little girl I have. If she comes home crying tonight, you'll go home crying tonight. Now that the Dinobots are officially a combiner, that means they need a Legends class member to join them. And rather than pull some obscure character out of the ether, they decided to create something completely new. And it is our first female Dinobot in toy form. Uh, I, I think IDW Strafe kind of beat you to the punch there. But nevertheless, we welcome Slash to the Dinobots as our first G1 style Dinobot in forever. We see she's done up in the traditional Dinobot colors. She is silver plastic with some red forming her core and black here and there. Looking very nice and looking very much as part of the team. She is of course a Velociraptor. Very popular after Jurassic Park and very much a popular choice for becoming a brand new Dinobot and makes sense not only for her size but also gender wise. This keeps her a little bit slim and puts some uh, feminine proportions in her robot mode which we will see here in a minute. She is done up in pretty much the traditional Dinobot way with a lot of translucent parts done up in gold, at least done up in a way so that the gold can shine through the translucent plastic does mean she does have quite a bit of the stuff. Top half of her head is made of it, the back, as well as the entirety of the hip joint, which is uh, all translucent gold with silver painted all the way around. Uh, this is a little bit unfortunate. Uh, let's see if I can get it on camera. Yeah, there, that's a crack in the plastic. And there's another crack in the plastic. So the clear ball joints on this have already started splitting on me. Hopefully that relieves enough pressure so they don't split any farther. It is disheartening that that happened pretty much right out of the packaging with her. Okay, so that out of the side. Let's figure out what else she is about. I mean, she does look nice. She does look very Dinobot-ish. You know what I really appreciate about her design? No feathers. There's no attempt to feather her. Not on the arms, not on the back of the head. She is pretty much what they would have thought a Velociraptor looked like. Pretty much what a Velo they thought Velociraptors looked like in the 80s. The same way that the Dinobots are the way we thought they looked in the 80s. With an upright T-Rex and Brontosaurus being a real thing, etc. And all those other little changes they made that ruined all your childhood favorite dinosaurs. Well, I'm happy the tradition continues because she makes a very nice blocky boxy Dinobot without a trace of any modernization. Other features on her that I happen to like, we do have the raised claw, just like you would expect from a Velociraptor, as well as the curled fingers. There is attention to detail here, despite the fact that she is the inaccurate original old-school Jurassic Park Raptor. She also has nice painted eyes, painted head, as well as an opening jaw and mouth. Speaking of which, articulation is up and down at the shoulders, and then a pretty good range, ball joint in the hip, there's a swivel there as well as a knee joint. Uh, nope, nothing in the ankle because we'd have to break transformation. This does come with a couple caveats, of course. She does have a big gap going through her body. That's unfortunate. And then, of course, she has these big thighs that make up her chest. But then again, we've seen the original Dinobot toy. This is forgivable by comparison. And she actually does uh, firm up quite a bit nicer than old school Dinobot did. All right. What else? Well, really quick, we can show the Titan Master integration, or Prime Master in this case. Well, I'm going to use a Titan Master to demonstrate that she has a little seat that a Titan Master or Prime Master can actually fit inside. If I uh, raise up Ultra Magnus's arms here a little bit. Hmm. I'm actually having a little bit... Of... Hang on. Mm, well, I actually switched to a Prime Master, and I thought this would alleviate the problem. Unfortunately, it looks like while they can fit in, uh, they don't fit in all the way, almost like they are designed to just kind of tuck in in Prime Master mode, which is a little bit weird and unfortunate. There just isn't enough space in the back for them to sit down in unless you work the legs really weird. I hadn't checked that in a while, so I had totally forgotten that defect. Okay, so the integration, not that great. But let's see what else she can do, because we can still transform her. What I do like is that the cockpit for it is also 
where we have to stuff her head for the robot mode transformation. That's actually a pretty handy little piece of double engineering. Go ahead and fold the tail over as well. That lets us proceed to unfold those very obvious robot mode legs. Split apart and then rotate at the thigh. They're just mushroom pegged in, so I'm being a little bit careful with them. Not too bad though. Feet folding out from the back. Not too big of feet, just little stubs. Hang up. Go ahead and rotate these arms up as well, just so they are not hanging too obviously off the back. Go ahead and break those claws off of the hands and bring them down under the forearms. And you've pretty much got your finished slash in her robot mode. It's a very quick and clean transformation. Does it pretty efficiently, though. Mm, yeah, a bunch of stuff ends up on her back. But hey, we'll chalk that up to Dinobot tradition and just enjoy her for what she is. As a fairly buff and powerful looking figure at the Legends class, despite her size. And we'll compare that here in a bit. First off... We take a look as usual with the head sculpt, and the head sculpt itself is very Dinobot-ish. It does have a little bit of liberty to it. She's a little bit more defined character-wise, bigger visor and all that, smoother face. So she does have a little bit of a feminine look to her, but you know that kind of goes with a smoother helmet than most Dinobots too. But I think she fits in well. I think the spirit and the initial design idea behind the Dinobots is definitely visible here. She fits in rather nicely. And now that she is in robot mode, we can definitely see she rocks the traditional Dinobot color scheme very well with a red torso as well as silver for the shoulders, forearms, and then the lower legs and black everywhere else. She does a very nice job of fitting in with the classic crew. Detailing on the chest is also very much. There's plenty of sculpting here that does kind of remind me of those old G1 Dinobot sculpts. She does feel like something that was updated from one of the originals. All the way down to her legs, those painted in sections are actually mold, molded. So she's got quite a bit of painted molded detailing here, which is always nice to see. She doesn't clean up great. We will admit that. While the head tucks away in a pretty clever way, uh, the... Raptor arms or something to do with. The tail, nothing to do with. This is one time where I was kind of hoping, oh, tail weapon. I don't think I would mind in this case, but nope. At least it all kind of flushes together nice enough, so it's not terrible. It's not egregious. And like I said, most Dinobots have a bunch of back kibble. It's tradition. So beyond that, she doesn't have a whole lot going on. We can see most of this in her beast mode. There's a little bit more exposed red and black here and there, but nothing too huge or anything. So we can go ahead and show you that the head does rotate all the way around. At least until it hits the hinge, that is. So ball joints in the shoulders work very, very well in spite of my worries over the translucent plastic. Ball joints in the biceps and a 90 degree elbow. They also have a 5 millimeter port for the hands. It's an open hand, so it's a little bit more uh, realistic than just a weird closed fist that these sometimes get. Ball joints in the thighs work exceptionally well. Absolutely no limitations or restrictions. Thigh swivel, as we saw in Transformation, 360 degrees, 90 degree on the knee bend. She's got plenty of articulation for her size, and thin parts does mean that she does have plenty of range and everything without too much worry about clashing or any or any extra parts getting in the way. Now, here's the downside to Slash. While her transformation is interesting and she does definitely fit in with the Dinobots, she is uh, she is not the biggest figure, uh, even in the Legends class. Here's Sea Spray, and you can see a massive difference in not only height, but bulk. She just... She lacks the solid plastic mass of some of the other more recent Legends class figures. I can keep uh, bringing them in here. Swerve, who's uh, around as tall, but again, very, very chunky, very, very boxy. So she does have a size issue, which might make her a little bit suspicious at the $10 price point. And even more so if you're overseas and it's even worse. I would say, though, she is an impressive figure for what she is. She is a natural fit with the Dinobots. She's a great little piece of engineering for her size. And yeah, she's got just enough articulation to make her pretty interesting. 
I do wish she had some kind of weapon to make her feel a little bit more Dinobot-ish, but for what she is and for what she brings to the table, I'm happy to welcome Slash to the team. Wow, 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 wow.